The air is a powerful force. In The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, avatars Aang and Korra can control the air as well as the other elements of earth, water, and fire. They're the masters of the environment, but this is just something in comic books, movies, and television. In real life, it's impossible for someone to control the air. Whoa! Or is it? Now let's go to play round! I'm Rusty Ward, and this is Science Friction, where I break down the real science behind comic book and sci-fi superpowers and tell you how to become superhuman. Airbending has been one of the most frequently requested powers I've been asked to cover, but despite the demand, I just couldn't see how a real person could do the things that Aang and Korra can. Making the air obey your commands, or even more daunting, making water or chunks of earth defy gravity and fly through the air, just seemed too impossible. I couldn't figure it out until I learned about a scientist named J. Storrs Hall. In 1993, he proposed a theoretical nanotechnology application called a utility fog. A utility fog is a swarm of networked microscopic robots that work together. Each nanobot is about 100 microns in size, the width of a human hair. Individually, they're invisible to the naked eye. If enough of them come together, they may resemble a mist or a fog, which is where they get their name. Each tiny robot or foglet has a spherical core and 12 robotic arms. Each arm can swivel around and has a grasping claw at the tip. Millions of these foglets can move and join together to create any shape or size you desire. And by varying the grip with which they use to join together, they can imitate the properties of different states of matter. If their grasping claws hold on tight to one another, they can become solid. If their grip loosens, they can act as a liquid. If it loosens even further, they can behave as a gas. Now, these foglets aren't lighter than air, so they don't float around you. What they do is stack on top of each other and surround you. They have sensors that tell them where they are in relation to you, other objects in the world, and their fellow foglets. The software they've been programmed with uses this information to tell the foglets where to go based upon how they should behave. So if you're surrounded by microscopic foglets that are told to act as air, when you sweep your arm in front of you, they don't get naturally pushed away like air molecules do. They sense your movement and roll over each other and around your arm in a coordinated dance that is like the movement of air. If you wanted to push someone backwards with a blast of air like an airbender, all you would have to do is command your foglets to rush towards the person. If your opponent won't budge, then maybe you need something with a little more oomph. You then command your foglets to strengthen their grip on each other and behave as a liquid. Then, you're hurling a funnel of water at your opponent like a waterbender. Once your funnel of water knocks your guy down, you may want to lock him up like an earthbender would. In that case, you command your foglets to act as a solid. Then, their strong grip encases your opponent in a mound of super hard earth. Granting you bending powers is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this technology. Each foglet is also equipped with an antenna arm that can change the wavelength of light it reflects. This changes the color of it. So each foglet could act as a pixel on a computer screen. A thin film of foglets could show you any image or picture you want. Futurists have also predicted that human beings may someday be able to upload their consciousness into a utility fog and grant them any form they desire. A good example of this are the foglet beings in Warren Ellis' Transmetropolitan. Sadly, one of the few limitations of this tech is that it can't take on the form of fire. The high heat would destroy the machines, so we'll have to find another way to firebend. But I will find a way. Right now, this tech is theoretical, but J. Storrs Hall and others predict that we'll have a working utility fog by 2040. This is longer than I'd prefer to wait, but years of spiritual study and deep meditation have taught me patience, as well as tolerance and compassion. I will wait until 2040, but if by that time this technology has not presented itself to me, I will tear this world apart in order to bring balance to it, like the Avatar.
If you like anime like The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra, there are so many other anime series I'd recommend to you. There's Attack on Titan, Sword Art Online, and the one I'm currently watching, Parasite the Maxim. You can watch Attack on Titan, Sword Art, and Parasite on Crunchyroll.com right now along with hundreds of other anime series. Crunchyroll is the sponsor of this episode and I'm really excited they wanted to team up because I've been getting a whole lot of anime superpower requests. You can go to crunchyroll.com slash science friction right now and sign up for Crunchyroll Premium to get a whole month of free anime. You can watch anytime on all your devices in full 1080 HD quality. So if you like science friction and want to lend some support, check out crunchyroll.com slash science friction and sign up for a month of some of the most recent and some of the most classic anime titles. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more episodes, check out some of the previous ones, and be sure to tell me what superpower you want.